be a little bit better than yesterday but only by a little bit yeah the internet's still a little bit a little bit weird but i have internet guys coming to fix that at 9 30 so by tomorrow all internet woes will be gone i hope i think all right still a little loud isn't it so that's better okay uh so here's what we'll do. Let's do our uh, our little Q and A, and just kind of keep it to questions you guys might have. I'm not going to go into a long diatribe. Uh, you guys know, hopefully, not to be stupid right now. <laughs> yeah, Solana. Isn't that funny? Brandon sent me a picture that said, you know, the, those things they have at the power plants that say is how many days since an accident. It said zero days. Uh, anyway, Solana, Stolana, they, well, listen, if all you ever do is, is operate meme coins, at some point there's enough people doing meme coins that the whole damn thing collapses. So like this should surprise nobody. Anyway. Um, yeah, good for them. And then, you know what? People will just be like, oh, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. Right. Just imagine that the whole monetary system just shut down for a few hours. No big deal, right? Just imagine that Bitcoin uh, shut down for a few hours. No big deal, right? Oh, it's no big deal. Um, well, I'm not so sure because remember, the people that are pushing Solana have always been those sketchy hedge fund guys. This is Solana was not pushed by tech people. It was pushed by sketchy hedge fund dudes, FTX, all of these like uh, finance guys that don't know fucking shit about crypto. And they certainly don't know anything about disintermediated systems and data structures. These dudes, these, the guys that created Solana, these are not like technological geniuses. These are some hacks from a hack company that weren't doing much over there either. So whatever, but same thing with DM. Like at this point, you can kind of look at what other people have done and you can kind of stand on their shoulders. So it's like, whatever. Um, let's see. I'm in LA. I am in Los Angeles. Just, I have one of those wall clocks I'm going to put. It's like a big wall clock and it looks real cool, but I don't know how to hang stuff. So I'm going to get people that know how to do that. Cause I think you have to find like wood and all that kind of stuff. You can't just go into sheetrock. I don't know how it works. Anyway, they have people for that. Let's see. Okay. I learned everything I need to know about Solana after they were hacked. But well, no, I mean, there, there's a lot about, yeah, there's a lot about Solana that's that's not to like. Um, and I thought, well, if all they ever do is just be a meme coin society, maybe that's fine. But apparently even that's too much. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, the Solana price keeps going up because it keeps getting pumped to a bunch of meme bullshitty people. Uh, so, yeah, no big deal. Um Let's see. Trish, oh, okay, good. Good, good, good. Uh, Loki's doing good. He's, uh, he's, he and um, the other kids. So there's three big cats. Well, they're not all big. They're pretty big. Loki will end up being the biggest, but there's two other big, kind of big ones, 25 pounds and 20 pounds. And this, what we call the baby, the small one. And she and Loki are now getting along really well. So that's cool. Yay. Um, I'm going to try to get, it would be cool to get a cat cam. <laughs> oh yeah. So they, they have a bunch of, um, the whole thing that's kept Solana alive is airdrops. Just a bunch of airdrops, 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 airdrops. Um, so yeah. All right. Um, 
crypto related q and I'll tell you what, let's do this. Let's go over and see what's going on. Okay, got it. Let's see what's going on on the exchange. Okay, people are buying Hypercycle. Let's see what are the listings. I always kind of go in here and check around and see like what's going down. Oh man. So we got some sellers. So people are taking the sell side. Oh, because somebody wants to buy at 57 cents. Come on, man. Wise up. Well, that's not that low. Uh, you got to get up to, you got, uh, you know, think about this. If you go to the DEX and the DEX price is 60 cents, well, why is someone going to sell you tokens at 57 cents? Now, if it was really like a super low liquidity situation, sure. But it, I mean, and it's getting there, but it's not there yet. If you have all these, I don't know, that, that seems, uh, anyway, you do you. Uh, and then what I also do is I look at the recent, uh, so, okay, 6,500, 5,000, 4,400, 2,500. I kind of get an idea of what the recent sales have been. This is kind of a fun way for me to just get an idea of how the market's been going and at what prices. So like that was a high, that was a 7,500 at 60 cents. That was 60 cents. So 60 cents is kind of like the mark right now. It looks like the line in the sand. It's weird. Oh, the washer and dryer are singing apparently. You hear? It's like making a song. I don't know what the hell that is. All right. Uh, kind of high um, Ethereum fees. Always check your GUI before you guys do a transaction. Always check and make sure the fees are not stupid. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, 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 uh. Let me go and look. Doesn't FTX own a bunch? Yes. And at some point, they're going to have to unload those the way they've been unloading Bitcoin. And that's not going to be good. Um, those, But your typical Solana investor is... I'm not going to say a less educated investor, uh, but I will say a not as smart investor. So there, you, there you go. I don't, I don't know what else to. It's I even have I mean I have friends that are that own it. I and it's because they're always trying to get one back. They're like they're behind because they never took good advice, and so now they're trying to catch back up. I'm like you're not going to catch up on Solana. Solana's like a hundred whatever it is what you think it's going to ten thousand? like come on man like like f and wake up it's the same people that are like xrp is going to go to four thousand no nope maybe in venezuela or with hyperinflation or if america completely collapses but at that point none of this crypto is going to matter it's going to be the robots <laughs> versus whoever's left of us <laughs> all right uh let's see uh, let's see. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, yeah, so, so Solana is being dumped to retail. That's the main thing. And and if people want it, fine. And I don't want, like, I'm not a fan of things crashing. It's kind of like an I told you so because it's crashed so many fucking times. But, like, I don't want it to crash because I don't want people to lose money, especially the kind of people that are investing in Solana are mostly stupid. Like, they're mostly idiots because if you look at a space – it's built on the only thing you can trust is the foundation of solid technology, solid software, a good team. I mean, that's why we do the five T's. If four of the five T's are goose eggs, then what are you doing investing in something? Like, it's just a straight up gamble. Now, that doesn't mean it won't go up or down because people move it up or down, but don't invest in stupid stuff. You can sleep at night. If you own Solana, and it's not just Solana, there's other, uh, Ethereum Classic crashed a bunch of times a, a few years ago. Like, um, if you own a network that crashes all the time, do you really feel safe? And also, do you really think that bankers around the world, that banks and banking institutions are going to leverage what they're doing on a network that, that constantly goes down? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So if the foundation, if the game theory and computer science is weak and the team is weak and the team steals from you, how many more flashing fucking red lights do you need? Like, but the, and then they go, but and then here's what everybody will say, but them gains, them gains. Cool. Well, if it's worth losing everything, then great. Go get them gains. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Uh, let's see. Uh, question. 
is Binance in trouble? Are they trying to get on the good side of regulars by delisting XMR down? Oh, um, I think everybody's going to delist most of the stable, um, sorry, most of the privacy coins. And I've had, we've talked about this for years in that that's very low hanging fruit for politicians. If you're a politician and you want to go after crypto and you want to say, hey, listen, these guys are dirty. They're pulling shenanigans. Well, then you go after the stable coins. I mean, th sorry, the, uh, you, you, well, you could go after stable coins. You go after privacy tokens because everybody would say, you know, not everybody, but the, the kind of the mainstream thinking is like, what do you, what do you need money for that's in private? Your secret, you know, the Elizabeth Warrens of the world. So, in the Brad Shermans, those douchebags. So anyway, like, I just, I just choose not to own any privacy tokens. Period. And I wasn't gonna hold, even if we ever had ever gotten midnight, which apparently we're not getting shit. Uh, I mean. That we, uh, Charles may have some explaining to do on that. That was a very weak pivot. Um, at least from what I understand, I don't, I, I don't know all the details because it's hard to get details. Um, but it looks like we kind of got shit on by, by, uh, the midnight team. And I don't even think it's Cardano. I think it's a team that's working on midnight that just decided they're going to have their cake and eat it too. And so, uh, I guess as Cardano holders, we will not really be participating as far as I understand. Anyway, we'll see, but um, I'm not gonna hold that token anyway. I'm gonna sell it immediately. I'm gonna, I'll have a, like a, a tracking sale. So like I'll wait, you know, 14 days or 21 days and I'll just sell this batch and then I'll wait and wait and wait in this batch. This, that's perfect, dust to dust. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, those rings are cool. And he was here, like he showed me them on his hands. It's badass. He's actually going to be here. He'll be here to um, today, later today. We're just waiting for the internet dudes to get here and give us the green light that everything's okay. Once they do that, um, he will be here. I don't know, dude. Did it log me out? Oh, it doesn't have my favorites. Crap. Anyway, it just shows all the stuff. Isn't it funny? Solana's barely down and the whole shit just shuts off. <laughs> no one cares. It's so crazy. All right. Oh, let's see. I fill my bag with Hypercycle 24. Ooh, nice. 24 licenses. That's going to be quite good a few years from now. Uh, I'm now buying to sell others at... A oh, okay. You're kind of a uh, license hoarding. Well, if I were you, Mario, I would be token hoarding because I don't think the licenses are going to be scarce yet. The tokens are the scarce item. We're going to make sure that until every last license is sold, that they're available. And by the way, you know, if you get um, anybody that gets 10 or more, uh, maybe you do, maybe, maybe we said that, but if you get 10 or more um, node license, this is a shameless plug, any of the node license NFTs, uh, where is that? Uh, let's do Mint, you go to Mint. If you get 10 or more of these things, then you, uh, you get a matching number of, um, hypercycle node licenses for free so just be aware if you buy 10 or 20 or 100 you get uh the node license in ft well and for the people that got 100 by the way why is it so sketchy looking for the people that got 100 um that's those are the people that are coming down for the investor weekend pretty badass huh and that's going to be there we're all going to hang out here and uh Tufi looks like he will be here with us as well. So for the investor weekend, that's going to be a lot of fun. So that'll be March 15, 16, 17. And Brandon will be here as well. It's going to be hell of fun. All right. Um, yeah, there, I mean, listen, there's money to be made on, on all these projects. Even crap projects, there's still money to be made on them. Um, I just don't want to make it. I don't want to be a part of it. That's just me. Um, yeah, you know, Howard, you can you can crack me. Otherwise, you can't get through the front gate. The armed guards are gonna they'll take you out. Let's see. Uh, and I'm not gonna make any kind of market recommendations. Yeah but uh you know 
and so it's gonna be great i'm getting uh the like the gig thing whatever uh, powerful thing but right now it's, it's basically from home see tethering from the phone so anyway um <laughs> the couch cushions yes yeah no look uh no one should do it unless they're well one you want to be um using node market because all of the revenue from node market that's collected from fees goes back to the token the nft holders but also the back end that we're building over there is going to be really cool so you'll go here and then pretty soon uh you'll go explore nodes and it's not set up yet but once you connect your wallet here very very soon and we're going to have more to say about that by the way tomorrow brandon and i are going to have some stuff yeah well let me know if it's still cutting out there's not much control i have over that um uh, but when um when we roll out this this next batch of updates you'll be able to do full um you'll be able to do the flow from tokens and licenses all the way to the hypershare token well the stack of tokens the, the kind of stack of assets and then uh you will be able to do um, a variety of things as far as node management, license management, node uh, reselling. Um, like for instance, if you build up your node and it splits a bunch of times, you'll be able to resell. And uh, you'll be able to compare your your license, your, your little data business with all of the other ones. Um, so you'll be able to buy, sell, trade, do all that kind of stuff. That's going to be badass. Um, you're going to be able to um do a lot of things that maybe are that seem a little bit more difficult if you're just going through hyper pg and so people would ask well, why are why aren't you doing it like making it public man it's like bro we gotta we gotta compensate the nft holders man they're the ones that have supported this this ecosystem was built on that the nfts are what fund everything so we gotta we gotta take care of our peeps um, and then we'll roll, we'll roll different parts of that out. Now, some of the management stuff is going to be available for everyone, but as far as like the actual management is going to be available for everyone. The flow, as far as the kind of this, the more streamlined, um, marriage of the tokens to the licenses and all that kind of stuff, that's going to be for node market, NFT holders and, uh, private clients, things like that. Yay. Um, but the digital investor group community will have a bunch of tools also that other people don't have. Um, I can explain a little bit. Um, you're going to be able to manage your hypershare tokens through us, meaning we're going to, we're going to work. I think, and I don't want to speak for Brandon, but I, I think the, the, the way it looks right now is that we're going to be working with hyper PG to create a direct path from node market from your management deck right like when you hook up your wallet and stuff you'll be able to manage your licenses there and point directly to hyper pg and then there'll be some kind of small management fee or something like that i can't say much more about it because i don't know exactly how that's structured that's brandon's um side of the workload so, so but i'm sure he'll tell you more about it i mean he may know more about it tomorrow I mean, he probably knows more about it, but he may, he may be willing to share more, uh, about it here in the next couple of days. So that's good. Yay. Uh, let's see any insights on Hyperbox uh, three. Um, I don't know the release date. I know that they're trying to pump them out. Um, but they're, they're ramping up for compute. Remember we're February and compute is likely to start in March. So yeah. Um, Terrence asks, Nick, what is the big deal with the XRP automated market maker? Uh, nothing. I mean, nothing. There's, there's not, there's not much of a big deal about anything that, that they do over at, um, Ripple. They're, they're still in court with the SEC probably for another year, factor in appeals and all that. Um, the technology is just. It was cool-ish. It's not really all that interesting now. And everybody's like, oh, there's going to be trillions of dollars in real-world assets. 
leveraging, uh, you know, spun up as, as uh, real world assets on, on Ripple. Maybe, I don't know. I don't think so. Um, again, I don't see big businesses and banks and financial institutions doing business with a company that's at war with the SEC, like so obviously at war and they're not really winning. It's, it's not, it's not like the ETF battle with Grayscale. This is not that. Ripple, the company Ripple would love to have you think that they won in court. No, no, no. The token won in court. Ripple, the company, got fucking hammered. They're still dealing with it. They're asking for like almost a $2 billion settlement. And you say, well, wait, where would Ripple get that money? Oh, they would sell the shit out of XRP. And so they're hoping that there's enough bad people willing to absorb that. Like at some point, you got to wonder how many people are willing to pay Brad and Chris, because that's what you're doing. You're putting money in their pocket. I mean, you've already put money in their pocket. Like all this, all of this bull crap. Oh, 589 and all this kind of stuff. The whole world, the whole world, nothing. I mean, put yourself in the position of a banker. Are you going to do business with someone that's in, engaged in a battle with the SEC, a losing battle? There's no, there's no winning with the SEC. There's just degrees of losing because it costs you a fortune. So I don't know, man. I don't know. So as far as I've read, not that much. Their technology is just not all that interesting. Um, and they're like, oh, we're becoming more decentralized. Well, if you're becoming more decentralized, it means you're not decentralized. I mean, there's, there's, listen, yeah, we could do a whole thing on how, but you know what? Bitcoin is, is not really decentralized either. The way consensus is determined is decentralized that the mechanism of finding consensus, but, and, and propagating transactions and, and validating them. But that's a little bit, you know, if you step back and look from 10,000 feet, you realize that it's a few mining companies that kind of run Bitcoin. They have kind of complete control over it. So like, is it decentralized? I don't know. Not really. If, if three or four, and so it's the same thing, like with, with Ripple, you have these delegators, these, these kind of um, representatives, that system. And you know, the big problem was like, oh, there's 25 of them. Yeah, but 24 of them are you, are Ripple. No, 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 it's, 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 uh, it's SBI and it's, a, it was, it's investors. So it's like the other people that were running those, cause you couldn't just run them. I said a long time ago, I said, why don't you just open it up where everybody could essentially run like a pool, like run a node, like be a, a delegated official in the, you know, no, no. Oh no, there's 25 or th whatever the number is. So it's just. I don't know, man. And so if you see that kind of behavior over and over, I just check out. I just don't have anything to do with those dudes. Um, Chris and Brad, when this whole lawsuit started, they should have both stepped down. That would have shown that the company was a little bit more mature. The fact that they were like, F you, we're keeping our money, F everyone. Like you already stole from everyone, Brad. What else do you need to do? Like no one, I don't know. I'm not gonna say no one, but as far as the people I talk to, Brad is not very well respected. He's a hack that came from Yahoo. Okay. That's a company that's made some of the biggest business mistakes in fucking U.S. history. They're like, go through, go look at the, um, the 10 greatest mistakes in business. And Yahoo is like three or four of them. It is so bad. You're just like, come on, man. I don't want that kind of heat. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'm cutting in or out or not. Sometimes when I don't see comments, I feel like, uh oh, we're not, uh, we're not, we're not propagating. Uh, extra, <laughs> yeah, that's about right, isn't it? Yeah, spirit token. I mean, Brad, Chris, Jeb McCaleb, they got billions of tokens and put them in their back pocket and started selling. Most of them at a discount with no lockups. They absolutely effed the entire community and the community supported them. You heard these idiots. There was a, oh, this kind of rednecky dude from Georgia who I used to like. And then when he was like, hey, y'all, let's, let's just think about how hard it is for Brad Garlinghouse. How hard it is, bitch. 
The dude stole, he, he, he sold on your neck a billion tokens, you moron. These dudes that they just get so lost in the dream, so lost in the magic, in the hopium, that they don't see the real world for what it is. Like, look through the bullshit forest and see the tr Like, come on, man. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. So, so I just choose on those kind of projects. I don't care if the token goes up or down. You know, you can get, you can do very good. You can be very wealthy. You can be rich. Wh whatever is your level of happiness in your financial career, you can do it without investing in bad players. Some people are going to make money trading crappy companies. So what? Like, let them do whatever. Do whatever you want. Um. So, whatever. And. You know, an, an AMM that could shut down front running. Yeah, true. But front running is not, we, we don't care about front running. So those are, you're, you're, I would just say that you're probably focused on the wrong things. What do you care if you're, if you're a long-term investor, if you're holding something for anywhere from a year to three years, what do you care if, if someone gets in a millisecond faster than someone else or a few, like a few bucks on Bitcoin? Oh, he got in a hundred bucks earlier than me. So what? The price is <laughs> 43,000. Who gives a shit? <laughs> um, so yeah, I just, as a long, as a longer term investor, I just don't think those things matter. Um, opinion on Flair. It's garbage. It's always been garbage. Lisa, I've said this a hundred times. Flair is garbage. Hugo is garbage. It's a scam. That dude goes and he copies other, pro other projects kind of, and he launches a spammy version of it. Flare Network is garbage. Hugo is a piece of shit. He's a thief. I've caught him lying, like caught him lying. And now he, he went to a non-extradition country so that he won't go to jail for his bullshit. He's a piece of shit. The whole company's stupid. I mean, there's probably people there that are cool. But I've seen, man, I've seen very, very sketchy behavior from that team. I would even say Flare... Well, are they borderline Stolana? I don't know. No, because Flair's never going to get that big. It's only going to be used by like 16 people. All the people who care about uh, Flair is that they get some free shit from them. Flair is garbage. There. There you go, Lisa. Garbage. <laughs> um, let's see. Thanks, Brandon, clarifying uh, AG. All, all these airdrops, James, they're all scams. Um, be very careful. Um, you're either on a scammy protocol. Look, when people give stuff away, sometimes it's marketing. Like with Optimism, they did airdrops to get the community to kind of accept the token and start using it. Optimism was one of the very few where it worked out. Most airdrops are scams. So you just have to ask why. And you have to ask, what do you have to do to, to qualify? And I just, I I'll pretty much just stay away from all of them. They're like, oh, you can get 400 here, 200, what? Yeah, true, you could. You know, you could, but um, again, I'm just not messing with it. I'm investing and that's it. Uh, okay. Nick, in your opinion, is it truly worth buying a hyper AI box as opposed to just using hyper PG? Well, you're going to keep more, you're going to keep more money if you have a hyper AI box because you're doing your own compute. It depends on how many um, licenses you have. If you have, you know, if you have a master node, no, the hyper AI box is not going to have the dexterity that you're looking for. Um, and for most people, hyper PG is going to be easier. So, but you know, you'll keep more revenue if you do it yourself. What I think you should probably do is people should probably, if you're in the hypercycle ecosystem and you enjoy it, you like it, you should probably have a, a box and run it and put two nodes on there, two licenses and just run it and have it. I'm going to do probably do that. I have two boxes. Where are they? Oh, they're over there. You can't see them. They're over there. Um, but I haven't uh, turned them on yet. I'm trying to figure out how I like how I want to do it. Um, yeah. Uh, zero opinion on any of those. And also, that's what not, I'm not really doing like token opinions. That's not really what this is. Um, that would be more something we would do behind the wall uh, for digital investor. Um, this is more just kind of. Uh, basic thought direction in the investment space. I think people get caught up in the FOMO, they get caught up in the hype and the excitement and the bullshit, and they end up doing little 
errant things that cost them a lot. Like I wonder, uh, let's see, uh, can, uh, internet and split. No, I don't, I don't think it can handle, I think it can handle one split. But by that time, you've made a bunch of revenue and you can decide, do I want to point it or do I just want to add a, another box? Also, you don't know. There might be bigger boxes. You might move to a server, um, one of these big Lambda machines or H100, you know, something like that. Like, I don't think so. I think the box can handle um, a license and and the splits. But it, but remember, if you're if you're if you get a split, that's like having enough business to run two coffee shops, but only having one coffee shop. It's best to build another coffee shop and then push that traffic over there because you're going to be eating twice as many calls, you know, twice as many calls from AI machines to, to do, to do work for them, to do different, uh, AI workloads. Um, yes. Hyper PG is a fixed return. Hyper pool is based on percentage. Yes. Um, do you have to have a certain number of NFTs to have access? Nope. It's one. Well, yes, one, <laughs> one. Everybody with one NFT of the of the node market NFTs. If I'm reading into your question, you have one or more, you qualify. Uh, so you'll get access to every goddamn thing they build over there. But we got to pay them, and there's a lot of them, and they're expensive. <laughs> AI is not yet writing all the stuff for us. Soon it will, but for now, we got to pay those suckers. Oh, uh, let's see. Not that we should be, we should bet on anything at this point. Would you say the future AGIX airdrops are dead and done for now? I don't know, man. They sure have been quiet. I keep hearing, oh, uh, Singularity Dow 2.0 is about to launch. When? They were telling us October. So November, December, January, February. I mean, I don't know, man. I don't like it when we're like a week behind schedule on something or two weeks behind schedule. These guys are, they have 25 people on the 30 people on their team and they can't get a piece of software out the door. Like you gotta just wonder like what's going on over there. What's, what's the, the direction? I know there's good people over there, but like, is it too many cooks in the kitchen? Something like that? Probably. I don't know. So what's going on over at, at eight at singularity net like i've heard nothing they're supposed to be rolling out the sentience wallet brandon and i offered months ago hey let us look at it nope nothing oh show us what you're doing they haven't showed us anything why not i don't know so yeah maybe we just we, maybe we just consider it's dead until further <laughs> until until more information <laughs> Uh, let's see. Hyper PG at 10% isn't much for the risk taking for the risk. I'm going to hyper pool. Yeah. I think hyper pool makes, makes a lot of sense. I think you do both. I think you take the guaranteed payout and then you take some of the other, um, on the website, I could not find answers on how to eventually purchase or get on the wait list for the hyper AI box. Uh, yeah, I think they're waiting until the third batch is ready, which could be like, um, uh, less than a month. I don't know. I'll add two coming over today. I'm going to ask him about that or I'll, I'll hit up Evan and find out what's going on with that. Uh, let's see. So when can I split some of my nodes and give to my son? Does he need to also buy a node market NFT? No, no one needs to buy a node market NFT. Do you guys understand that? No one needs to buy any, anything period. If you do, you'll have access to the dashboard and all that kind of stuff, but nobody needs to do anything. Do it or don't. Uh, let's see if I have my, uh, no market NFT in one wallet and my nodes in multiple wallets, do I need to move? Yeah. I mean, I would consolidate. Um, I would probably consolidate stuff because the node or you, or you'd need an NFT in each wallet because it's, it's token gated. So the way it knows that you have access to all this cool shit is because it sees the node market NFT in that wallet. Uh, let's see. Sounds like you might be losing. I'm not losing faith in Singularity Net as far as Ben Gortzel and the and the leadership team. I'm losing faith in their ability, the software side of them to implement. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. They're just not they're just not getting it done, man. 
Um, again, Ben and his team are getting it done. It's not, but Ben's not the guy who's doing coding. It's, you know, Singularity Dow's not getting it done. Rejuve's not getting it done. Newnet's not getting it done. Cogito's never going to get it done. That's a, that's a damn fail. So that leaves you with HyperCycle and Singularity Net as the core assets. Again, I'm not telling anybody to do anything. I'm just saying. A uh, good number of core assets. Chris, it's like a good number of friends. How many friends can you be friends with? Because you need to be friends with these assets. I typically say somewhere between you know five to seven are your core asset. And then you have your peripheral stuff. Okay. Uh, what's the price of box? I, John, I don't, that's, I don't know. I think, I'm not sure what they cost right now. I have no idea. I can't even, don't get me lying. Um, if we have say five no market NFTs, do we hear you say that if we minted five more, we'd no, you it's, it's if you do it at one, if, at one time. Well, you know what? Hit up Brandon. Did you, if you just did it, Craig, like recently days ago, I would say, yes, we could do that, but not, um, not if you just randomly add some later, but, but hit up, hit up Brandon and ask him and maybe you can like break his ankles and, and you could probably twist his arm on that one. I would say, uh, okay. If I have my no mark entity, oh, we already did this one. Okay. If, uh, if a hypercycle node splits. So think of it as a division. Okay. It divides. Now we have two, like mitosis. We do not have to add more tokens. That's correct. You don't have to add more tokens because now where it was 1,024, it's now two, two licenses, two nodes of 512. And then four of 256 each. And then eight, you see where this is going? 126, 16, 32, 64. Look. Yeah, got it. Until there's 1,024 individual licenses uh, in individual nodes with one token in each. Cool, cool. Uh, let's see. Can I move a node license placeholder before the split? Can I, can I move a node license placeholder before the split? Audrey, I don't know what you're saying. Can I move a node license placeholder? I don't know. I, I'm not exact. I'm not completely clear on what you're saying. Okay, uh, how do I deploy my node license with the tokens to achieve the approximate 30 for 11% for license 12? Uh, that would be, and again, you can't do that now. That's not rolled out yet. Compute has not started yet. That's not till March, but um, I think that would be through uh, hyper, uh, hyper pools. <laughs> Don't break his arm, but twist it, twist it. Give it a good twist. Uh, let's see. Three years. Um, Brought in other members, wrote a stellar two-page review. A two-page review? Howard, you got way too much time, buddy. <laughs> what do you mean bounce you from the party? No one bounced you from the party. <laughs> and uh, no, it's it's not a party, buddy. All we're going to do is be in LA, in the sun. We're going to go, and we're going to go check out the Getty. We're going to go have some nice dinners. We're going to talk crypto. We're going to talk theory. And we're going to, you know, stare at the common folk, but, but it's not like you're bounced out. You got to be at the party to get kicked out of the party, buddy. Come on now. And yes, if you waterboard him, you're definitely getting your, your deal. <laughs> okay. So, uh, good one talents. Um, hyper AI box H1 is 1199 H2 is 1259. Okay, cool. So now we're getting some numbers. Um, Hmm. I don't know, man. I can't comment on where you should take profit because that depends on where you, your dollar cost average price. Uh, what's the best way to move node market NFT to a different MetaMask wallet? You, you just transfer it. It's just, a, now you don't have to do, I mean, it's, it's a, it's an NFT. You can just send it to another wallet. You go in, you click on it. You just do a send, You're sending it. From one wallet to the next. I mean, use OpenSea because that's the easiest. Go into OpenSea, open up your wallet in OpenSea, go into the hidden folder if it's hidden, then you'll see it and you can move it. That's pretty easy. Okay. Um, 
what's the minimum size? Oh, we don't know yet. Um, they're working all that out, uh, Zeppelin. They're working all that out. Um, they're trying to create some some basics that people can go by some guide. Remember, they're about they're still about five and a half six months ahead of their roadmap. So you got to remember that a lot of times other parts of the business haven't caught up to the development side. This is the opposite of Singularity Net where they're way behind everything. These on this side, the software side is way ahead of everything. So they got to let the marketing department and the people that come up with sales collateral and propaganda and all that, they got to let them ke catch up. <clears throat> okay. Um, divorce is rough. Don't divorce. Don't do it. Um, can it, uh, okay. Can you move your node? No, don't move your node licenses. Um, don't move them because you don't have the real one yet. You just have a placeholder. Wait till you get the real one. Um, all right. Uh, you know what? Let me see. Oh, here's a question. Uh, how about Digital Investor Weekend? Uh, okay, Digital Investor Weekend. We'll do we'll do a Digital Investor Weekend after we do uh, the Investor Weekend. Uh, and we'll do it in, uh, you know, somewhere fancy. Yeah, we'll do something. It'll be fun. All right. Uh, let's call it a day. I'm going to see if I can get these internet people to like turn on the damn internet so we can get some good service here. Um, stay in school. Don't do drugs. Don't do anything my poor and solvent drunk. Just on a mess. Meth grandmother wouldn't do. And uh, for those of you that uh, if you grab... Again, if you grab 10 of those NFTs, remind Brandon to give you your 10. Uh, that's not from the past. That's from like, I'm just saying it now, overtly. Um, remind Brandon to give you some node licenses, man. Tell him, get them out of your back pocket, bro. Quit being so stingy. Don't be so stingy, bro.